Hi everyone, today I'm here with Jess who runs her own YouTube channel Steminin. Yes, it's a YouTube channel about doing you know, science, science education videos and technology vlogs with a focus on engineering and technology and conservation. Yes, and so Jess is an engineer, that's what you've studied, mm -hmm. um, and well, with my background in maths and physics, what we're going to talk about today is talking through some tools that we've used, you know, tools for STEM majors. We're going to work through a list of things that we've found helpful, and the idea is to just raise awareness of these things for you if you've never been exposed to them before. For example, the first thing that we're going to talk about is something called Wolfram Alpha. And this is something where you can essentially do maths or solve tricky integrals. And when I was at high school, I had no idea that this software existed. And when I got to uni, I was actually quite far into uni, maybe quite far through first year. <laughs> maybe a little too late. <laughs> a little too late <laughs> before I saw someone um, or they said, oh, let's just check this integral on Wolfram Alpha. And I was like, check this integral? Like what? You can yeah. do that? Um, so yeah, I guess I'd like to tell you guys about this so that you don't find yourself in that same situation. Um, so yeah, that, that first one was Wolfram Alpha. Back when I was a student, Wolfram was, it would show you, so you would put in your integral um, or your derivative, or you can also solve um, matrices and do linear algebra in Wolfram Alpha, which is really yeah. cool. And you would put it in and it would actually give you a step-by-step -step solution so you can see every single step um, along the way. And now they've changed it, right? So now you can just see the answer. Yeah, so I think if you, when you go to the main website like wolframalpha.com or whatever it is and you, you type in an equation, it shows you, or you want to solve something, it just shows you the answer and it wants you to pay like... I think it's maybe like seven dollars a month or something for the pro version to see these step-by-step -step workings but the workaround that i found mm -hmm. for this um, is that if you on your phone download the wolfram alpha app and it does cost money i think it was like australian dollars maybe like three dollars or something okay then it was that was a, just a one-time payment and it's on your phone and then it always shows you the step-by-step -step solutions there so I would find myself taking my phone out like in class and doing the like oh, the integrals on there great. so then you could yeah. see it. Um, yeah, and I would say like for any STEM major, I think this app is like worth it. Not sponsored by them, but <laughs> I, 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 I definitely think that, yeah, it's just a really good way to check what you're doing, even just to see graphs of yeah. things on the spot. For, um, so I would go to Wolfram if I, you know, you sort of understand the concept, but you don't, mm -hmm. you really can't figure out the problem. But for learning more about concepts and for the parts of math where I wasn't so strong and really, like, for example, volume integrals or mm -hmm. surface integrals, we had to do that in, I think, one of my calculus classes. Um, a really great online resource is Paul's Online Notes. That's a really great resource if you're, um, yeah, just really you don't understand a mathematical concept, it's really well laid out, um, and you're gonna put the links of the things in yeah, the description. Yeah, I'll put them all in the description. Okay, yeah, so just check the link in the description. So another thing that we wanted to talk about is LaTeX. Yeah. And so this is something that I guess, you know, people don't really know about it until they find themselves having to use it. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, foremost like a, a way to write documents. It's could be similar to Microsoft Word in that way, but it's different in the fact that you essentially program it to look exactly how you want it to look. It's great because you tell it what to do and it does it. Like it's great for figures because in Word you put a figure and all of a sudden you move one figure and everything is yeah. broken and all over the place. But for LaTeX, whatever you do, it stays that way. Yeah. Yeah. It, it also means that there's a bit of a learning curve before you can use LaTeX. So if you're desperately trying to write up a document quickly, you know, you could probably just use Microsoft Word, but LaTeX will make it look a lot nicer and is sort of the standard used in science um, to publish like theses yeah. or whatever it is. You'll, you'll probably have to use LaTeX. Um, but because there is that learning curve, it, it makes it a little bit harder to get started mm -hmm. using. Um, like you can't just you know, insert fraction. You have to learn like how you type out a fraction, like backslash 
FRAC or something like this, curly yeah. bracket. So I, I find it can be quite daunting to get started, but it makes your documents look way nicer. And yeah, I'd, I'd recommend for anyone mm -hmm. in STEM trying to you know, be aware of it and start learning a few things so that you know, it's, it's easy to make your documents look nice. Yeah, like you were saying in scientific writing, especially sometimes if you're publishing, this is like obviously in the future, mm. but there's a lot of journal articles that have their own LaTeX templates mm. and then they're like, please use our LaTeX template. And then you can find yourself in that situation where you're like, oh, I don't know how to use yeah. it. <laughs> so the one thing that I would recommend you to do if you're going to learn to use LaTeX is to use Overleaf. And Overleaf, there's many different reasons why. First of all, Overleaf is online. So usually when you're using LaTeX, you're writing a bachelor's thesis or a project, um, a project report, and you don't want to be in the situation where all of the work that you've done is now gone because your mm. computer died. Yeah. <laughs> this has happened to happens more, more than you think. Yeah, it really happens more than you think because you're like day and night slaving over your computer. You have so many classes. Your computer mm. has like catting software on it. It's like trying to work with large spreadsheets and then the computers just die. It, it happens. Mm. So I would really recommend you use an online program. So I use Overleaf. Additionally with Overleaf, you can learn to use LaTeX in it because it has tons of templates. So you just go into make an account, download a template, it mm. opens up and then you can start playing with the template in Overleaf. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say Overleaf is probably the best thing because you can like share documents and mm -hmm. do collaborations on it. I personally used to use something called Tech Studio, which is, I guess, similar, but it's offline and you know you don't have the benefit of being able to share things so easily and save your work like on the cloud, but it, it's just, yeah, a good way to get started. Um, and likewise, just download some templates and, and try to edit them and see what happens, go mm -hmm. from there. Something else that you might not know about um, until you're in a course needing to use it is something like MATLAB or even Python. So MATLAB, I guess in a way it's a programming language, but it's also like, a GUI? A, a GUI. So I, I don't know exactly what to call it. It's a program. There we go. But um, I think it's like a matrix laboratory is like where its name comes from. It's a way to do math, essentially, a way to deal with like linear algebra. And I don't know, you can, you can do all sorts of things on here, draw plots, process data. I don't know what you've done on it as an engineer, but um, I know I've used it lots of times just, you know, as a more advanced way to solve equations and to plot what's going on. Yeah, so it's kind of funny because all of a sudden I was in a class where I needed to use MATLAB mm -hmm. and everyone is kind of just thrown into this first class in our engineering, you know, this was like in our second year, second semester. So after we've already done a year and a half, we've never heard of MATLAB and then you find yourself in a class where it's completely MATLAB. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, by the way, all of these assignments are done in MATLAB. And we were yeah. like, what is that? <laughs> um, but the funny thing is, is that after this class, almost every single one of my engineering classes used MATLAB mm. for either graphing, um, image processing. Mm. You did math. Yeah, we did graphing, image processing, like solving big equations or everything. I mean, it, it's a programming language, but it's also like its own, like it has a compiler already <laughs> inside yeah. of it so you don't it's it's kind of like an easier way to get started with programming yeah. I would say maybe um, I remember when I started using MATLAB it was for a course it was for like a mathematical modeling course and I hated it I hated MATLAB okay. I was like I don't want to use this it's just because I, I just didn't know how to use it and yeah. I, I found it was too hard to learn like there's probably a lot of good resources but I just had, didn't have any of those resources to learn like and I remember thinking, oh, this is so stupid. As soon as I get out of this class, I'm never going to look at MATLAB again. But that's not what happened. Like, no. That was in first year. And then ever since then, I've just used MATLAB all the time. And it's just become something that I actually like using now. Like, yeah, I, I just plot just random small things on it because it's just actually quite easy. Mm -hmm. So again, there's a bit of a 
a bump to get over, a bit of a learning curve for it. Um, but once you get past that point, I think once people actually know MATLAB, then they use it all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. like even for, you know, you can make graphs with Excel, but they look yeah. way oh, better yeah. in MATLAB. So yeah. That's, that was the thing, like in my first time using MATLAB, I was like, oh, this is stupid. I'll just use Excel to draw these. No, <laughs> never. But then now that I think back to that, I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> MATLAB is so much better. I would say um, since we both were kind of thrown into it and we don't really have any resources, the way I started to use MATLAB was um, you download the program. If you're a student, you should be able to get it for free mm. through your institution. And then you can find a problem that you want to solve. Like if you just want to write a hello world script, just Google hello world in MATLAB and some sort of Quora article yeah. <laughs> will pop up. And that's the way I learned it. Mm. Yeah, so something similar in a way to MATLAB would be Python, like that is a programming language and um, I mean, f in my experience, I could do similar things on both these programs, so I would use them kind of interchangeably. I found that the graphs and plotting on MATLAB was nicer because, I don't know, I, I just found it easier to work with. Um, but yeah, but both tools, I think, that are useful yeah. for STEM majors. I think Python, kind of when I started to learn it, it kind of makes more sense because mm. everything is organized and like functions are in libraries and all of this yeah. stuff. Um, whereas MATLAB, you have to kind of Google the specific syntax. Mm. Um, but other than that, I would say, yeah, as you said, they're kind of in every programming language, it's like really similar. You just need yeah. to learn the syntax. Another one, it's actually similar to programming languages is LabVIEW and it's, I think, from what I know about it, it's a, like a visual way to do programming. So I've used it in only like a couple of labs where you have to like drag and drop various components that can control an electronic circuit. But to be honest, LabVIEW is not something I know very much about, but we had a small discussion. <laughs> <and> we... <laughs> yeah, so I also haven't used LabVIEW that much, just in my first year engineering labs. It's a very visual way to program, and I've heard that you can use it to program Arduino also, mm. which is very <laughs> cool. Um, I haven't done that though, <laughs> um, but you will probably encounter LabVIEW at some point, so just be aware yeah. that um, it's just another programming language. Another but, tool that yeah. I think we both agree would be useful to know something about. Yeah. Just another tool that I've found, I haven't actually used it in any of my engineering classes, but I did find myself using Excel quite a bit in one of my internships. and. After you learn how to program, using Excel is kind of tedious, especially yeah. if you're like, why am I acting like a cave person <laughs> and doing everything manually? Why can't I just use MATLAB or whatever? But the company is using Excel. So what you could do, just be aware that if you don't want to be a cave person <laughs> and you're stuck using Excel at a job, you can use VBA, which is Visual Basics for Applications. And it's basically the programming language inside of Excel. So everything you do with your mouse on Excel, you can actually program Excel to do it on its own um, using VBA. So that's another really mm. cool tool. And then the last one that I thought would be worth mentioning is, um, of course, CADing software if you're in engineering. I don't know if you got the chance to I use haven't it. really used it, but I've seen it in action. Okay. I've, I've actually looked on some of these sites where you can get like 3D printing just templates mm -hmm. when I thought maybe I'd like to 3D print something, but I have no experience really making these things on my own. In my engineering major, we had to learn how to CAD. My engineering major was mechanical engineering. And even though I don't do CADing anymore, what I did find is that now I'm kind of really valuing 3D printing and it's really cool because I can use those CADing skills that I learned in school and apply them to 3D printing, um, which is really cool because 3D printing, you can print anything you want, you can build anything you want. <laughs> so I find that some of my friends that are even in environmental science and haven't done any engineering at all are learning to CAD just so that they could use the 3D mm. printer. Yeah. Um, so in school, I had to learn SOLIDWORKS which is a really simple program, but 
There's a free program online from Autodesk. If you're a student, I'm pretty sure you can get all of their programs for free. So that's called AutoCAD. So you can start learning and then you can start printing your dreams away. <laughs> Those sound good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, um, thank and you. that was our list of things, list of tools that might be helpful to you if you're considering going off and studying one of these topics. So thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful.